This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. A textbook case of genocide. Israel has been explicit about what it's carrying out in Gaza. Why isn't the world listening? That's the headline of a new piece in Jewish Currents by our next guest, Raz Siegel. He's an Israeli historian, associate professor of Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Stockton University, where he's also an endowed professor in the study of modern genocide. Raz Siegel joins us now from Philadelphia. Professor Siegel, welcome to Democracy Now! Lay out your case. Thank you for having me. Um, I think that, indeed, what we're seeing now in Gaza is a case of genocide. Uh, we have to understand that the UN Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide from 1948 requires that we see special intent for genocide to happen. And to quote the convention, intent to destroy a group as defined as racial, ethnic, religious, or national, as such, that is collectively, not uh, just in uh, individuals. And this intent, as we just heard, is on full display by Israeli politicians and army officers. Since 7th of October, we heard Israel's president. Uh, we, it's well known what Defense Minister Yoav Gallant said on 9th of October, declaring a complete siege on Gaza, cutting off water, food, fuel, stating that we're fighting human animals and we will react accordingly. He also said that we will eliminate everything. We know that Israeli army spokesperson uh, Daniel Hagari, for example, acknowledged one tune destruction and said explicitly the emphasis is on damage and not on accuracy. So we're seeing this special intent on full display. And really, I have to say, if this is not special intent to, to commit genocide, I really don't know uh, um, what is. So when we look at the, at the actions uh, taken, the dropping of thousands and thousands of bombs in a couple of days, including phosphorus bombs, as we heard, on one of the most densely populated areas around the world, together with these proclamations of, of intent, this indeed constitutes genocidal killing, which is the first act, uh, according to the Convention. Uh, of genocide. And Israel, I must say, is also perpetrating Act Number 2 and 3, that is causing seriously uh, serious bodily or mental harm, and creating conditions designed to bring about the destruction of the group by cutting off water, food, uh, um, uh, supply of energy, uh, bombing hospitals, uh, ordering the fast evictions of hospitals, which the World Health Organization has declared to be, quote, a death sentence. So we're, we're, we're seeing the combination of genocidal acts with special intent. This is indeed a, a, a textbook case of genocide. Can you talk about the displacement? Israel saying that the entire northern Gaza, now hundreds of thousands of people have complied, must move south. Uh, the northern part of Gaza is the most populated with Gaza City. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as as is well known, this is this is an impossible uh, order. It's impossible for specific groups of people, people in hospitals, uh, people defined as disabled, uh, 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 elderly people, many many Palestinians who refuse to leave their homes because of their histories and their memories uh, of the of the Nakba. This is an impossible order. It's yet another indication of the of the intent to destroy, the intent to commit uh, uh, genocide. It's also worthwhile to emphasize uh, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant uh, new term that he coined, uh, complete siege. It seems like a completely uh, a new term that really takes the uh, what was already a 17-year siege on Gaza, the longest in modern history, which is already a clear violation of international humanitarian law. It takes this siege and now turns it into a complete siege, which really signals the, the turn to this kind of genocidal destruction that we're seeing, including with this uh, uh, eviction order. It's also worthwhile to, to try to, to explain, I think, why, um, why Israel is so explicit uh, in, in its uh, declaration. We're, we've heard uh, Israel president talk about evil. We've also heard about uh, Biden's use of the word evil. EU uh, uh, leaders describe the Hamas attack as evil. And it has to be said, the Hamas uh, attack 
uh, uh, were clear war crimes, the mass murder of more than 1,000 Israeli civilians, a horrendous war crime that rightfully shocked many Israelis and many, many people uh, around the world. But evil is, is not a term to describe them. Evil is a term to decontextualize. Is a, evil is a term to demonize uh, and to really enhance the, uh, the widespread fantasies of Israelis today that they're fighting Nazis. Actually, former Prime Minister uh, Bennett, uh, Naftali Bennett, said that directly in an interview yesterday. We are fighting Nazis. We see this in many, many other indications in Israeli society and politics today. And if we're fighting Nazis, then every Everything is permissible. Uh, Professor no Siegel, law. I actually wanted to go to the former Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, who's currently in the Israeli army. Uh, this is uh, from a few days ago, where he exploded at the Sky News anchor Kamali Melbourne during an interview Thursday, when Melbourne pressed him on Israel's attacks on Palestinian civilians. This is a part of what he said. What about those Palestinians in hospital who uh, are on life support and babies and incubators whose uh, life support and incubator will have to be turned off because the Israelis have cut the power to Gaza? Are you seriously keep on asking me about Palestinian civilians? What's, what's wrong with you? Have you not seen what happened? We're fighting Nazis. We don't target them. Now, the world can come and bring them anything they want. If they, you want to bring them electricity, I'm not going to feed electricity or water to my enemies. If anyone else wants, that's fine. We're not responsible this is, for them. This is the point. But you this keep is on, the point. You, no, no, I, I want to tell you, no, no, listen, listen you no, listen to me right now. I've heard trying, you enough. No, no, I understand. I, we're trying to have a conversation here. Listen, this no, is my you're, program. You're, you're this is my show. Get, I, and I am asking the exactly. questions. You're raising your voice, yeah, country, and I've asked you, when, and we've already, people, we've already stopped, people, please, and let me finish. We've already distinguished between you, Hamas. Mister. I want to tell you, you shame you're, on you. You're trying to speak over me. We no, no. are not shame on you. It's nothing I'm about the, shame. I, I We're trying to have a conversation There's about a very serious situation because, here, because, and you are refusing you to address it. So that is the former Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett exploding at the Sky News anchor Kamali Melbourne. Uh, Professor Siegel, you're an Israeli historian. This is what you're talking about when he uses the Nazi um, analogy, and also uh, when he says, are you seriously talking about Palestinian civilians? Your response? That, that's exactly what we're—it's uh, it, it's very important to understand that in this context, uh, 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 the idea of fighting Nazis, uh, the idea of using Holocaust uh, memory uh, uh, in this way. There's a, there's a broad context, a long history, of course, of this shameful use of Holocaust memory, uh, which Israeli politicians have used to justify, rationalize, deny, distort, disavow mass violence against uh, Palestinians. And it has allowed also a view to develop that sees Israel as somehow exceptional, exceptional, providing it impunity. The truth, however, is that all perpetrators of genocide actually see their victims as dangerous, as vicious, as inhuman, right? That's how the Nazis saw the Jews, and that's how today Israelis see Palestinians. Uh, and, and that's why the, the lessons of the Holocaust, actually, which were never meant to provide cover and ration, rationalize state violence and genocide, but rather protect uh, 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 groups, especially stateless and defenseless groups, groups under military occupation and siege from violent states. The lessons of the Holocaust are now very, very urgent. We need to center the voices of those facing state violence and genocide, and we need to move to prevention as fast as possible. As possible. In order to do that, we need to recognize what's going on around us, what's unfolding in front of our eyes, which is really a textbook case of genocide, with the rhetoric, with the actions, with everything involved. Raz Siegel is associate professor of Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Stockton University and the endowed professor in the study of modern genocide. He's an Israeli historian. His new article for Jewish Currents will link to a textbook case of genocide. The subtitle, Israel has been explicit about what it's carrying out in Gaza. Why isn't the world listening? Back in 30 seconds.